Hi everyone, my name is Grant Gregory and today I'm going to be discussing electronic health records. Before I begin, I need to give a huge shout out um, to my advisor, Professor Mark Williams. Um, if he hadn't helped me throughout the semester, uh, this would not, I would not be here today. Um, so this is a photo of me on an anti-gravity treadmill. I was taken earlier in December um, and this was the first time I've been able to run in over three months. Uh, I had bilateral groin surgery where um, both of my abs actually pulled away from the pelvis and so it had to be reattached. Um, by no means was this trivial. Um, but when I woke up, um, my surgeon said, uh, don't worry Grant, you're gonna, you're gonna be fine. The hardest part is gonna be the documentation process. And I was, I was <laughs> admittedly I was like, are you, are you kidding me? Like, I feel horrible, uh, but um, in the next few weeks, I had to travel an hour uh, drive to pick up a CD um, for my MRI and drive another hour so I could even have this um, PT appointment. And a few weeks later, um, one of my teammates um, had to do the same thing, except he had to take a train down to New York City for a 15 minute appointment and then come back. Um, and it was really apparent to me that this system is really inhibitive for every type of patient, all patients. Um, and when I left the appointment, I remember feeling so rejuvenated um, and really excited. And to me, this became a motivating factor for building this, uh, this Keystone project and finding a way to let other people um, achieve this more easily. And so with that, um, that leads me to the three disciplines of my Keystone project, an industry analysis of the electronic health records industry, EHRs, um, a research paper on the said industry, and then after analyzing these two, I was able to form a venture as well. So it was really apparent that there's not a solution for patients that allows them to adequately access, view, and share their records. And after some analysis, I was able to dis distill it into four main reasons. Um, government regulation, um, limited competition, limited accountability, and then misaligned incentives. And so for the government regulation, there is numerous legislations passed that forced institutions to digitize all their records. Um, but that said, when the time came to actually roll them out, um, a lot of these companies that are building these products released half-baked software, and so it wasn't fully functional. And tied that with the fact that there was low um, competitors to begin with because of all these significant um, capital expenditures needed to start these companies. Um, you really had low competition paired with really misplaced uh, software. Um, and so you have a lot of issues right from the onset. And this ties into the limited accountability where hospitals were frequently dealing with data breaches. Um, and as of 2017, um, a report from Accenture pointed out that one in four patients in the U.S. has had their health records compromised. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean your records are on the black market, but what it does mean is that hospitals are dealing with ransomware attacks where they are locked out of their uh, systems and they have to pay millions to billions of dollars to reaccess them. And the accountability and the onus is all on them. It's not on the EHR companies. And then finally, um, because these companies are selling their products to institutions like hospitals, um, there's no direct input from patients or providers, and so that leads to a service that um, both end up really dislike using. And so I did my own research as well. I was able to get over 100 surveys uh, responses from physicians and patients, and we got some pretty encouraging metrics. Um, firstly, an overwhelming number of patients um, want complete access and control of their medical records, but interestingly, only around 30% of physicians um, felt the same way. In addition, um, around 8% of the patients um, believe that having their records stored electronically would actually compromise the security. Um, but after we did some more analysis, we found that of this 8%, 80% of these patients were born between 1950 and 1960. And then lastly, providers are spending anywhere from 40 to 50% of their time on their electronic health records. And this is actually the leading cause of physician burnout throughout the US right now. And so then we also um, proposed some solutions um, and we got feedback from patients. Um, again, all very encouraging. 80% of patients were strongly in, in favor of having their records anonymized and then used for research purposes. And then almost 50% of all the patients were willing to pay for a service that would allow them to have access to a um, precision health report uh, based on their own medical records. 
And so overall, there's a clear business opportunity here, and that's led to Apollos. And so Apollos's main goal is to build a patient-centric platform that, allow, that promotes privacy, portability, and controlled access. Now, with privacy, on top of having industry-leading encryption and other measures, it's also important to add a secondary layer of security with a permission-based blockchain system. And so this will allow when certain individuals are granted access to these records, um, only they can explicitly view them. And every time these records are viewed, it's stored in this database. Because we'll have all the security, uh, patients will be able to view and access their records on any device on a cross-platform solution. And then with this, we can then allow them, when they view their records, um, they can then explicitly share them um, with their providers. And then this is done instantaneously. Um, <clears throat> and with this platform in place, we can then use some modern technologies to really uh, create innovative solutions. And so we can use machine learning to develop a uh, precision health report that analyzes a patient's medical history, along with other factors, and provides a unique, tailored a health report that allows people with chronic illnesses um, to better improve their health. And so after we had this value proposition statement, it was important to analyze the competition. And so there's really three types. There's the industry incumbents, the EHRs, um, there's the startups, and then there's the tech behemoths. Um, the EHRs I've already discussed. Um, their solutions are pervasive, but pretty much everyone dislikes using them. Um, as for the startups, an example is Picnic Health. They actually have a lot of the same features that Apollos is prov promoting, except their business model doesn't really align with substantial market penetration. They have a $300 enrollment fee, and then they have a, a subsequent subscription model. And so this not only doesn't allow them to capture a lot of the market, but they also are um, uh, preventing people with, um, without the means of doing so to have access to their records. And then this leads to the tech behemoths, um, Apple, Amazon, and Google. They definitely have the capabilities to provide a uh, comprehensive solution, but patient sentiment isn't exactly positive with Google and Amazon controlling your personal medical records. And then Apple, who even has um, more of that trust, they struggle to have uh, dominant market share just based on their Apple ecosystem. And they really struggle to have a, a good sense of market penetration, especially in developing countries. And so with that, it's really key that Apollos tries to get in front of as many patients as possible while eliminating the barriers to entry. And so that means providing a free service with health-based advertising. And a simple example is, say, a patient is deficient in vitamin C, they'd have an advertisement for um, orange juice or something like that. And it's a simple example, but it shows that there's potential to also promote health through that. And then the, the main revenue generation is through um, data sharing and a research opt-in. And so essentially patients will be able to um, be compensated for sharing the records uh, and a policy will take a cut. And to just give you a sense of the revenue potential here, a single record can be sold from anywhere from $400 to $4,000. So there's a large scale opportunity here. Um, and then in terms of what I've done this semester, so I've built this um, web application template. Um, we've actually have it functioning now. Um, we're developing the back end, but essentially you can see that, and a brief aside, this is not my records. These are fabricated, so <laughs> I did not. <laughs> I have to point that out. Um, but you can see, so it's a chronological timeline. You can filter the records based on each of the criteria. Um, you can share them, you can view the providers that you're sharing with, and then the home is where you'll be able to view your, your uh, precision health um, report. And then in terms of what's next, so this summer, uh, I'm really excited to announce that as of last night, I've officially been accepted into the Build Lab um, Summer Accelerator Program. And so with that, I'll have access to uh, four mentors, um, and then a comprehensive training program over 10 weeks. And then additionally, I'll be granted $10,000 in funding, which will then be used to immediately finish um, building the web application and then also um, begin the iOS and Android apps. And so once those are completed, then I can um, use my existing records that exist in these different institutions, um, do a pilot program and test to make sure they work with real data. And then from there, we can roll out into alpha and beta testing. And so in closing, I think it's important to recognize how large the healthcare industry is and how inefficient it is. And this can be really immobilizing. Um, and I found this quote from Dr. Atul Gawande, 
who's actually the CEO of the um, Amazon, Berkshire Hathaway, and JP Morgan venture named Haven. Um, and I think this really um, is illustrative of what I'm trying to do, and that you don't have to be the smartest person, you don't have to be the most creative, but if you diligently apply yourself every day to building a better solution, you'll be able to accomplish it. And I think at the ultimately, what I want is for all patients to have the ability to have complete control of their medical records, and then, um, you know, regardless of socioeconomic status. And I think ultimately, if Apollos can do that, that'd be amazing. Um, but ultimately, if I end up blazing a trail for someone else to do that, I think that'd be great as well. Thank you. Any questions? Yes. Out of curiosity, do you know how um, you're planning for Apollos to be mostly utilized by the patients, correct? Mm -hmm. um, do you know how, like, exactly to I guess communicate like the records being sent to the physicians themselves? Like, are they also going to be using like an Apollo scheme, or are they going to be using Epic still? Yeah. So the question is, if with if with patients using this platform, how are when records are shared, how are these institutions going to interact with them? And so. Ideally, Apollos would then be adopted by a lot of physicians, but since they have their existing systems in place, um, it's important to be able to generate a link, you know, either through a QR code or, or some sort of secure transmission um, where they can view the record and then download it and add it to their existing system. Yes. I love that you told us why doctors when we're in appointments are like this the whole time. 50%, <laughs> um, that's amazing. Does your program have some solution to that problem? So the question is, does my, a lot of doctors are constantly working on their EHR solutions. Does Apollos have a solution to allow them um, to spend less time doing this? And in the near term, um, the main goal is to provide an avenue for patients um, to directly manage their health records. A lot of doctors are actually hiring scribes that Per, their sole purpose is to interact with the uh, EHR systems. Um, that said, that's also kind of inhibitive for a lot of practices. Um, ideally, um, that's something that Apollos is going to definitely address once we do more research with what physicians need. But right now, I think the more immediate concern is having patients have um, complete access to equal health care. What are your long-term plans to fund the business? What are the long-term plans to fund the business? So this summer, um, the Build Lab Accelerator provides you with the four mentors, as I touched on. Um, a lot of them are leading industry um, executives or just uh, mentors. And so the goal is to provide, to place you in a forum with other startups um, where you can be collaborative in how you're approaching these solutions. Um, and also be exposed to a lot of, um, you know, some of the next steps. Um, the goal for Apollos is to find, um, to create uh, the infrastructure in place with a team so that once I begin working uh, this next summer, um, I can sort of continue doing this um, and have some people working here full time on this as well. All right, thank you very much.